deal with people that act like they're your friend, but secretly they have resentment or they're plotting against you or they're just learning from you by being your friend, being around you, but secretly they, they resent you. You can't change that. You can't change people. But how do you operate? Like, how do you deal with that? You be you. Mm -hmm. That's it. You be you because at the end of the day, you know, Sam is only going to be accountable for Sam and maybe his family and his, you know, people in his close circle. Mm -hmm. But but honestly, like, you know, if someone takes something away from me, that's great, you know, <laughs> because I just gave them a part of me. Yeah. Okay, so I don't... You influence them. I influence them. I don't care about what these other person does. I mean, what they do is I believe in karma and I believe in like full cycle. I believe like if they do you wrong, then somehow it'll, it'll come back to you. You mm -hmm. need to forgive them and move on with your life because you need to think about it in your head because you can't think about, okay, hey, you know, this person did me wrong and I can't believe they did because that's going to eat you up. Right. Worry about you. You worry about, hey, you know what? I gave that person, I did them right. Hopefully they, they, they'll pay it forward and do somebody else right. But even if it wasn't intentional, right? Like someone... Even if, even if they had the... They had already had the intent. They already mm -hmm. had the preconceived. They had a preconceived that, you know what? I'm going to go learn from this person and I'm going to go open up a furniture store right in front of them. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. You know, you do you. It doesn't affect you. It, does, it won't affect me because I'm going to do me. I'm going to be the nice person. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to do, I'm, you know, you can't change people. You can only change you. I agree. Yeah. Although you could, you can impact people, and that's a whole different thing to get into. Is like um, impacting and changing is two different things. Right, but uh, I feel like in this context, it might be interchangeable. And what I'm about to say might make a little, make it a little bit more clear. I feel like if someone opens a furniture store right in front of your store, and they're they're claiming to be better than you, or they claim to be, you know, the superior place to go. Uh huh. I'm curious to see how you'd react, and then I'll tell you how I how I'd react. First of all, I welcome competition mm -hmm. because my my main competition is me. You know, the product that I put out and the the trust factor that I put out in front of people. So I believe me. Look, I've had exclusive furniture. I've been operating it now for 21 years and six months, mm -hmm. over six months. So it'll be 22 next year. If I worry about Okay, well, what is this person doing? Then I'm not going to be able to focus on my business. I agree. Not going to be able to focus on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. My intention, my attention is always this: how, when that customer comes to my door, yeah. I can make that their experience the best experience. That when they leave my store and they go to another store, they're gonna miss me. They're oh. gonna be like, you know what, man? I need to go back over there because people mm -hmm. over there were nice. People over there were friendly. People over there were, were better host. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, I need to go back over there. And that's even before they get their product from me. That's if they don't buy from me. And that's what I worry about. And that's why I treat my people with respect. Because when my people, the people who, and when I say my people, my employees who work mm -hmm. with me, yeah. not for me, with me, mm -hmm. they need to be treated with respect. Because if I treat them with respect, then they're going to care about me. And when they care about me, they're going to care about my customers. And that's, at the end of the day, you got to care about the customer. I agree. And, and then everything else, you know, is, fits the puzzle right there, right, right where it's supposed to be. That's a very, very mature, uh, you know, statement. I feel like that comes with experience. Well, personally, what I was going to say was, you know, it may, may show signs of uh, immaturity, but... The way that I kind of deal with direct competition is obviously putting a lot of my focus on uh, myself and my product, like you said. But part of it is like uh, playing strategic chess. It's like you do want to stay ahead. You do want to have the superior product. You do want to keep an eye on what they're doing. Yeah. You don't want to ignore. You don't want to just, you know, if you, I feel like if you ignore your competition, you're not going to see their moves. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I'm so so so. Yes, I'm glad you said that. So I don't want to be, I don't want my conversation, my, my statement to be misconstrued over there. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yes, you have to keep an eye on the on the competition. You got to make sure that you know you stay ahead of the trend and the circle and everything. Yes, but but what I meant is like, 
don't put all your energy or don't focus all your energy 100%. on the competition. You got to do all that other stuff. You got to make sure that your your stores are clean, your stores are up to par, they're remodeled, they they they're looking crispy, they're looking shiny. Uh, you know, you have a better product. You're 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 staying with the trend, all that stuff. But at the at the same time, don't want to focus all my energy on that. I agree. And one thing I've kind of recently learned is. Um, you sh- you do want to ignore your competition in the micro sense so that they don't become aware that you're paying attention. Yes, that's a very very um, kind of a good strategy. You you want to let your competition do what they're doing, even if they're copying you or if they're imitating your uh, your vibe or whatever. But you don't want to make it obvious because yeah. then they'll stop. They'll rethink. They're not going to stop doing it. They're just going to stop the way they were doing it before. Yeah, I'll tell you. I share a story with you. Sure. So in two thousand. 11 maybe 10 10 or 11 i don't remember exactly the year there was a there was a there was a guy who came to my store and you know he was secretly shopping matter of fact he even ended up buying some furniture Mm -hmm. no idea who this guy was he came in several times uh, before he made his decision Uh, he went and opened up the store maybe a mile away from me Um, he recruited three of my guys oh wow out of there Gave them a good, because he, you know, he just didn't know how we were operating. They took all my principles, took everything I was doing, my advertising st- strategy, the way I was financing customer. He even took the message I was saying on advertisement, on my advertisement, and did the same way. He then went to the same radio station, started advertising, the same mediums. Um, just following your... Just followed everything, right, mm-hmm. to the T. Yeah. And, and and he was and he did really well for himself for a couple of years but but then I, like I always say it's a, it's not a sprint it's a marathon mm-hmm. you know so and and he really did very well for himself and he was doing really good um, he was beating me on my own game right but but I, I'm like I can't focus at him because I did kind of change my focus I'm like I'm trying to focus on him. And that's when I when I started focusing on him, I started my business started suffering. Yeah. So I recoiled, went back, mm-hmm. you know, started focusing on my own business. And people make people when they get when they get successful or when they you know taste a little success, they lose the focus yeah. and they they make they make mistakes. Every business I make I make mistakes every day, mm-hmm. but but it's like what it's not the mistake you make. It's the it's the lesson that you learn from the mistake. Right. You know how they say failure is really important part of a success. Mm-hmm. And so I mean, if you fail, I mean, failure is basically mistakes. Right. Okay. So I made some mistakes and I learned from that. And then I'm like, well, I can't do these. I can't make these same mistakes. Make a long story short, that gen- that that business was, you know, they didn't even last two years. They made wow. several mistakes. Uh, and and that's one thing that and you know the reason why I brought that up is because a lot of entrepreneurs do that nowadays. They taste a little success, then they go fancy, they go crazy. Mm-hmm. They they buy themselves nice Mercedes, big houses, go for crazy, uh, you know, vacate, go on crazy vacations. They increase their overhead, yes. and and I mean they go they increase their overhead so much that now they start robbing their business out of the cash flow.